So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can edit our portraits and make our subjects look their best. Now this is such an important concept to grasp because we're photographing loved ones and of course we want them to look their best. But how exactly do we go about doing that? So it turns out there's some really important tools and things that you should know that we can use that's really going to make sure that our images absolutely shine. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we're shooting in portrait mode. So why portrait mode works so well is because it identifies the face and then it blurs the background. By removing the details in the background, by blurring that background effectively, we're removing any information that the eye is going to be drawn to. So we're only looking at the face of the subject that we're photographing. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Take a look at this example here. Now here's the before and here's the after. Now clearly we know there's a difference here, but what's more important is that we understand what that difference is and why that actually works. Number one, it's warmer. Anytime you're shooting a person, I really want you to consider the color temperature of the photo. We all prefer people to look warmer versus cooler. And you're also going to notice a few other things that we did to the face that we can't do natively in the Photos app. So we're gonna take this image into a third-party app and I'm gonna show you exactly what we need to do. It's easy, it's simple, and it's effective. But what we need to do is first open up this photo in the Photos app. There's a couple settings here that's gonna be helpful to make the image look its best before we bring it into that third-party app. And let's do that now. So with this image loaded inside of our Photos app, what I want to do is click on the word edit on the top right. And immediately, if we have a portrait mode, you're going to see a few other options that you don't have otherwise. So the first thing we need to do is adjust the aperture or the depth of field. So if I click on where it says F4.5, now you're gonna have a slider at the bottom of the screen that allows me to adjust that depth of field. Now F4.5 is pretty good, but what I think is gonna look a little better is if we drag this to the left a little bit and notice what happens as we do. We just get a shallower and shallower depth of field. We're basically blurring that background more and more. Now I don't wanna to go too far. And this is important because if you go too far in some scenarios, you might actually get an unrealistic result. So I think somewhere around 2.8 just gives me a little bit more of a blurred background than we typically get by default. All right, the next thing we wanna do is click on the icon on the top left there. And what that's gonna do is gonna bring up my menu for studio lighting. And this is really powerful. It actually allows me to shape the light on our model. And what we're gonna do is drag this to the left a little bit. I'm not gonna choose studio light. I'm actually gonna choose contour because it really does take into consideration the three dimensionality of the face and gives me effectively studio level portrait lighting on location just using this software. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see your face a little bit. Now the default is 50% and honestly, most of the times I feel like it's a little bit too strong. So it's important for you to understand that we can actually adjust the intensity of this effect. So what I'm gonna do is drag that slider on the bottom there and just bring this down, maybe about half of the intensity, so around 25 or so. I think already that looks so much better. It looks way more natural. So now that we have our portrait mode settings dialed in, let's go ahead and adjust some of the other settings we have available to us inside the Photos app. So I'm gonna click on our adjustment tab here and let's just go ahead and go over to Brilliance first. I'm gonna drag this up to maybe around 25. That's just gonna brighten up my scene but do it in a very intelligent way. Next up is my highlights. I'm gonna drag that down just to recover some of the highlight information. Just a little bit. I think 15 is gonna be good. Now that the lights start to look better already, I'm just gonna adjust the color a little bit because it just feels like a little bit too bluish and a little bit too pale. So I'm gonna move all the way over until I find my vibrance and saturation and warmth. And let's click on warm. Let's drag this to the right a little bit and increase the warmth of this image. Not too far, but let's do something around 50. That's looking a lot better. So before and my after. That one adjustment really did make a big difference. Now lastly, I'm gonna choose my tint. I'm gonna drag this to the right, maybe somewhere around there. It just offsets a little bit of that green cast that I noticed on the photo. Now that's looking so much better already. It's really important to add that warmth and that tint, especially when you're dealing with skin tones in a portrait. So now that we have this photo normalized or corrected with the global adjustments inside of Photos app, we kind of reached our limit here. So there's our before and there's our after. Now this is an incredible adjustment. I actually love this photo, but we don't have a lot of opportunity to really work on the skin textures, for instance. So while I love starting in Photos app here, and look what it did to really correct the before and the after, we want to take things a step further and gain a little bit more creative control in how we adjust our portrait photographs. So in order to do that, we're going to share this with a third-party app, and the one that I love to use is called Lenza. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click on Done. Now we're going to click on that Share icon on the bottom left. 
I'm gonna scroll down a bit until I reach Edit in Lenza. And if I click on that, that's gonna immediately launch the app with this photo already preloaded in the editing so I can get started right away. So before we get started actually editing this photo inside of Lenza, there's a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention. Number one, this is a paid app, right? So it's not for everybody. You don't have to use this app, but if you do find yourself editing portraits quite a bit and it's something that you're interested in, I've tested a lot of apps, trust me. This is one of my favorites. And it's one of my favorites because it's so powerful, but it really is simple. We don't have these options quite yet inside of Lightroom. It's not that fast, it's not that intuitive. We have to make complicated masks and that just kind of slows us down. Now, having said that though, these options might be coming to Lightroom soon, but at the moment we don't have those options yet, and that's exactly why I'm recommending to you why would you want to use the third-party app. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is at the bottom of the screen here, we have all these different options from morning to day look to go out and then glam. And what that basically is, is a series of automatic adjustments that differ in their level of intensity. So if we start with just morning, it's going to take a lot of the options that are available to us, and it's just going to give us a very subtle and realistic effect. So let's zoom into the face. It's automatically found the face and masked that for us. And now see what happens when I click on morning versus day versus go out versus glam. You're seeing that there's a level of intensity of the adjustments that's starting to take shape here. I'm going to go in just a little bit more. Here's my before and here's my after. You're noticing that it's smoothing the skin. It's removing those dark shadows under the eyes. It's whitening the teeth. And that's what I'm talking about. All these things that we could technically do inside of Lightroom, it would just take us too long. This really is the better tool, at least at the moment. So we don't wanna just do those auto adjustments. I wanna show you how some of these adjustments actually work. So for this example, I'm gonna click back on none and let's get started editing this photo. Now, the first place I wanna start is the skin. So I'm going to click on the bottom here where it says skin, and that's going to bring up a whole bunch of options. And the first thing I'm going to do is zoom right back into the face there. And now let's take a look at face retouch. I'm going to drag this all the way to the right. And just like that, it starts to retouch the skin. Now, in this example, our subject already has such beautiful skin. It's not really going to be too critical that we adjust the skin. But there are some scenarios where this can really be helpful. And even in this image, we are seeing some improvement here. Now I'm going to go ahead and keep this right around seven. So next up, we have deep retouch here. And honestly, it's not going to make too big of a difference in this scenario because the skin is already so good. But what this will do is if you have a lot of blemishes in your subject's skin, this will automatically target those blemishes and just start to blend them away. So it looks a lot better. The skin starts to look a lot better. We don't have that issue here. So we're just going to skip right past that as well as the next one. The neck is already covered, so we don't necessarily need to adjust that neck retouch slider either. Now what we do want to adjust are these eye bags. Let's just zoom in a little bit more and watch what happens when I drag this to the right. You can really see that's starting to make a difference there. So I'm going to go quite far here. I'm going to drag this all the way to the right and maybe just back it down one. Let's keep it at around nine. Right, I usually don't go 100% for most adjustments, but this really does make a big difference. And so why not use it to almost its full capacity? So next up, we have our vibrance. Now for this, I'm just gonna zoom out just a little bit so we can see some more color in the photo. And I'm just gonna increase this a little bit. Now this is something that we also could have increased inside of our Photos app, for instance. But while we're here, we might as well increase the vibrance just a little bit. So next up, we have the option to adjust our skin tones. So basically what this does is adjust the tint of the image, similar to what we have already inside of the Photos app. So we're going to grab the slider and just drag it to the left. And what that's going to do is introduce just a little bit of magenta into my photo. Right around negative two is going to be just fine. Just gives me a little bit offset of that green cast that I saw on her skin. Next up, we have our face shape. Now this is obviously a very subjective adjustment we're going to make on our photographs. So it really is up to you whether or not you think it's a good idea or how much of an adjustment you want to make. But it's worth pointing out that we do have these sliders available to us. So if we want to make the eyes bigger, if we want to make the nose smaller. Now for this, I think the only thing that's really going to make a difference here is I'm going to grab the smaller cheeks. This is where I can just show you what this is doing. And it just starts to reshape the face a little bit. You can see that there. Not that she really needs it, but I just want to adjust this a little bit so you can see what this is actually doing. So let's just go about halfway there. Let's go to about five. I think that's going to look really good. So next up we have our looks, and that just gives us some more options that we have available to us to adjust our portraits even further. So let's zoom back in here. Let's click on eyelashes and just drag it to the right. I'm really gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. 
And if I drag the slider to the left and to the right, you're gonna notice that it is actually targeting those eyelashes. So I'm gonna keep this up quite high just so you can see the adjustments start to take shape. Next we have our eye contrast, and this actually works really well. If I drag this slider to the right, pay attention to her eyes now. They really start to pop out, don't they? So I'm gonna go quite high, somewhere around eight as well. Okay, let's move on. We have our eyebrows. So in this example, I'll just increase the eyebrows just a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Next up, we have our face contouring. So rather than me just explain this to you, let's drag the slider to the right. Now take a look at what's happening. I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit so we can see the entire face. And now let's drag this slider. Now it's very subtle, but what you're gonna notice, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more and pay attention to her cheeks. Now you're gonna to start to notice that brightening, that slight brightness value on the top of her cheekbone and slight shadowing on the bottom of her cheekbone. It just helps contour the face a little bit and shape the face using lighting. And it all happens in a single slider. Now next up we have brighter lips. That does exactly what it sounds like. It's just gonna brighten up the lips a little bit and it's also gonna increase the saturation. I'll just do this around five so we can actually see the adjustment take shape. And then we have teeth whitening. Now this is another really useful feature to have. This happens quite often, right? We take portraits and people are smiling and we really do want them to look their best. And this is something that we can do in Lightroom again, but it is quite difficult to make that selection, at least at the moment. So in here, inside of Lenza, we have a single slider that will do just that. So what we're gonna do is drag this all the way to the right. And just like that, it just whitens up the teeth. Now I typically don't do this all the way maxed out to 10. I would back this off just a little bit. Maybe around eight or nine is gonna be fine. Let's choose eight. Otherwise, it starts to get a little bit into the unrealistic type of an edit, and I don't ever wanna do that. So this is already starting to look good. So next up, we have our shadows and we have our highlights. Now, this is quite interesting. This isn't the same thing as shadows and highlights inside of Lightroom, for instance. This really does target specifically the face. It automatically masks the face. You'll notice that we didn't have to make any selections at all. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I grab the shadows here and I drag this to the left, you're gonna notice it starts to affect her face and just the shadows of her face. Now, if I zoom out just a little bit here, look at her scarf. You notice how it's not affecting her scarf at all or even the background, for instance. It's just affecting her face. Now, what happens when we adjust the highlights? Let's drag that. And for this example, I'm gonna drag this to the right. Now, this is not brightening the image and it's not brightening her entire face. It's actually figuring out where the light is falling on her face and brightening that from a single direction. It just gives us a little bit more of a contouring type of a light. And between the shadows and between the highlights, we have a lot more creative control of the direction and the intensity that the light has on the face of our subject. Now, this is looking pretty good. Let's keep on going here. Now we have hair color. <laughs> Yes, we can actually change the color of the hair. And just because we can do something doesn't necessarily mean that we should. But because we're here, and because it's worth knowing that you can do this, I am going to change the color of her hair here. And yeah, you guess it, what I was thinking is a lime green. I think that's gonna look very natural in this example. I think it's gonna work perfectly to complement her skin tones. And of course, I am kidding. So I'm gonna turn this to different colors just to show you that we can do this in a single click. And it is kind of cool. I personally wouldn't use this most of the time, but it's worth knowing that you can, and it is actually quite effective. Now, how do we turn this off? We just grab that intensity slider and reduce it all the way to zero, or we can simply click that reset button as well. We actually finished up our edits inside of Lenza, and it really is that simple. Let me show you the before and after now. Here's the before, if I tap and hold on the screen, and there's our after, before and after. Now it's up to you how far you wanna go with these sliders. In this example, I really did wanna keep it very subtle here. She's already a beautiful woman. We don't necessarily need to make drastic changes to this. It is worth mentioning that there are other options available to us in here too. I wouldn't necessarily make those adjustments here. We can do this in other apps. I just wanted to use Lenser for what it does best. And that's exactly what we did here. So you can certainly play around with it. You can have a good time and see all the other ways in which we can adjust our portraits, specifically for areas that really do need adjustments, such as bringing attention to the eyes and brightening the teeth. These are all things that that are actually quite effective and realistic if done properly and takes honestly quite a bit of time if we're gonna use apps like Lightroom. So using Lenza, dragging a single slider and knowing this is available to you, this really is what I would highly recommend if you want the fastest and most efficient and effective way to edit your portrait photographs. This video was a free preview of the iPhone Editing Academy online course. In this course, you'll discover everything you need to know to edit your photos to perfection using the device that's always in your pocket. Whether you want to breathe new life into your old images or make your best photos even better, 
you'll find out exactly how to do that on your iPhone. I'll show you the latest photo editing tricks that will transform even average photos into stunning masterpieces in just a few minutes. So if you'd like to learn more about creating incredible photo edits on your iPhone, please take a look at the full version of my iPhone Editing Academy course. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link now and I'll see you inside the full version of this course.